Since the inception of the New Towns Development Authority, NTDA, in 1981, it has created many land schemes that have been deployed for residential, commercial, and mixed institutional purposes. Interestingly, NTDA does not only create the schemes, it also opens them up by ensuring the provision of necessary infrastructure and promotion of large-scale physical development. This is done through infrastructural intervention that covers construction of road networks, provision of electricity through installation of electric transformers and cables, street lights, pipe borne water reticulation system, central sewage system, amongst others, to make the schemes conducive for living for prospective residents. There are um, Legotians living in these estates. They always cry out a request for their roads, you know, to be done, for their drainages to be done, that they don't have electricity, you know, their water system has collapsed or whatever, or they don't have it at all, they don't have any functional sewage system and all that. You know, this is to make, improve the lives of Legotians in their areas of habitation and to make sure that they have, uh, you know, a good conducive environment to work and to live. They, as the owners of those schemes, should provide a basic infrastructure. Those that are developed by the private developers, of course, the private developers that will provide infrastructure within that scheme. So, NCD has that responsibility to uh, provide basic and necessary infrastructure. And that's why we call it set and services. The necessary services that <coughs> those uh, schemes need, NCD as owner should provide them. So when they provide them, it is now left for the um, residents or the owners of properties within those schemes to ensure uh, that those uh, infrastructures are well maintained because they will be the users. So, but NCD will not totally leave it to them. NTD as owners, we uh, periodically visit the estates and liaise with the um, uh, CDAs or CDC to ensure that this um, infrastructure are maintained uh, for the benefit of the resident of the estate. The provision of infrastructure is made possible by the collection of capital development levy CDL from the allottees. In the past, government allocates the land and continues infrastructural development while the allottees take possession concurrently. The authority creates schemes and we are expected to collect money from every allottee of government schemes in terms of capital development levy. This particular money that we collected is being used to fund the provision of infrastructure within the schemes. When you say existing scheme, though they are existing, but we are expected to even provide infrastructure facility before they move in. But because the money do, does not come at once, so Maloti pay their capital development gradually. As of today, even in Lake Iskin 1, which is almost 40 years of creation, there are some Maloti that have not paid up their capital development levy. How do you want the government to finish the infrastructure facility of those schemes? That is why it's been gradual. To achieve mandates of the agency, which is in line with the same agenda of this administration that is making Lagos State a 21st century economy. The finance and account department of the agencies is committed to ensuring prompt payment of the capital development level by all stakeholders. The CDL from each scheme is applied to improving the already you know, uh, set infrastructure or the existing infrastructure, or to provide 
a new one where there is none. It's one of the uh, fee that they collect, one of charges. It's not every year. It is to provide that facility. After provision of that facility, and the facility should be on the resident to maintain. The latest approach being adopted by the authority is to partner with developers to provide the infrastructure in schemes while they are compensated with land. This option is currently being used in Ibeju coastal city. It's a gated estate. It's 35 hectares of land. And what we are doing there now is to finish all the infrastructure facilities before they are not moving. Because we encourage the lot of government within those schemes to finish up their capital development, even to pay at once, not gradual. Under the leadership of Mr. Governor Babajide Sawulu, NTDA has embarked on many projects in both existing and proposed schemes across the state. While some have been completed, others are at different stages of execution. We receive cries, letters, and uh, pleas from allottees or residents, if you like, of the schemes that are under us in NTDA. We also do another thing. We go around, we look at all the roads ourselves, and we look at how important those roads are. A road might be the road that is having its drainages, you know, collecting water from all the side roads and discharging, you know, into the lagoon, like Freedom Road, like uh, Amore Ray Johnson, and all those roads like that. If they require any fixing, they become priority. Then the degree of rot, or dilapidation of the road is also a factor in bringing it up the ladder for consideration. It may be a road that has cut off. You know, a road is about a link. You are linking one to another for connectivity, isn't it? Once it has disconnected, you have to fix it. In terms of road infrastructure, NTDA constructed Ogunshono Crescent and Dikin Laja Deile Close, both in Magodo. The project comprised site clearance, earthwork, culvert, drain, pavement, and surfacing, including the provision of street lighting. In Omole Phase 2, Durosimi Abokunwa Street, Oyebode Street, Lekon Asone Close, and Admiral Oduwaye Street were constructed by NTDA. The projects also involved site clearance, earthwork, culvert, drain, pavement, surfacing, and street lighting. Uh, NTAD, NTDA has done a lot for Omoli Phase 2. And this, I would say, specifically under the administration of uh, Governor Robert Jide Sonwulu. Um, before the advent of the administration, we have been engaging the uh, Lagos State government for the construction or the construction of some of our roads. And uh, unfortunately, to no avail. But uh, with the inception of Governor Sonwulu, we only wrote one letter to him. And uh, he directed NTDA to liaise with us, and NTDA did four roads, brand new roads in our estate. Various projects comprising road and drainage construction and provision of electrical and mechanical services were executed by NTDA at Akim Dixon, Falaushibo, and Fatai Arubieke streets in Leki Peninsula Phase 1. The major road behind us here, uh, called uh, the Follow Shiba Road, it was almost impassable. Every time there is rain, it's floods and all that. Uh, when you go further, it's called Abimbara Emmanuel. 
uh, it was NTDA that specifically did that road. And since then, at least we can now go from one side of the estate to the Freedom Way and all that. So NTDA has uh, all been uh, partners in progress. NTDA does get involved with buildings from time to time. You know the Lagos homes that are going around, La Homes and all that. There are many, many mechanical services in those structures, in buildings, you have the toilets, you have the uh, pipe network for the building and all that. Waterworks of the building, the tank, calculate how many gallons will be needed per floor, add all the floors together, determine the size of your tank, how much tank do you want to use for the ground, ground tank, what's the height, elevation you are going to give it so that it can have pressure. When it's coming to that, that's mechanical work. For instance, in a scheme uh, that we have in Shongotedo, it's called Golden Jubilee Scheme. It's a popular scheme, you know, it's, it's nearly completed. And uh, the sewage system is a central one, central sewage system. We designed it to use gravity in some places, a little bit of pressure in some other places. You know, that's purely the authority went further to carry out site clearance, earthwork, construction of culvert, drain, pavement and surfacing, including street lighting on eight other roads. These include Noble Close, Augustine Anozier Street, Road 91B, Princess D. Oyekon Street, Road 49E, Abike Drive, MFM Market Street, Chris Otolano Crescent and Ayodele Odubi Street. Just know that uh, this is a community that has over 10,000 residents. Yes, this place has households, I mean, not residents. When you talk about residents, you have over a million. So we have really quite a huge number here. I think when you look at the estates that are being uh, controlled by NTDA, I think Lake If is one is. Uh, I will call it the prime estate. But I would say kudos to them, at least they came to our rescue. And this has impacted positively to the lives of our residents in terms of at least free movement and uh, less flooding because those days of uh, that, those roads not being done was really a very big um, uh, distraction to all of us. Yes, people were making detours, going to work, coming back was hectic. But now at least it's a little better. In addition to the completed projects, the authority is undertaking the rehabilitation of Laura Stevens Street, Lekki Peninsula Scheme 2, alongside the construction of drainage and pavement works. We always think that things are free. And we should just look at it from our personal vehicles. You have enough funds, so you buy a very fine Honda CRV, brand new, and then you refuse to fuel it. How's it going to move? So you require funding for it. It moves. It's moving you about one year, two years, and then one day your tire gets flattened. You don't want to spend to inflate it or to rip. So, so human beings have all of those things. The question is, can NTDA really fund all of those things? If we are expecting government to provide money or to provide allocation to do those things, then it's going to take a long time because there are a lot of other needs of the environment. The CDAs, um, should also be involved in maintaining uh, and providing some infrastructure. As you can see in Lekki Scheme 1, for example, now, you find that a lot of the part of the estate are controlled or are maintained by um, community development uh, associations. Like, for instance, this particular area, there is something they call the Lagoon Community Development. And they do, in fact, they're installing streetlights, 
they do the security and I, I presume sooner or later they'll be doing also the drainage. And so they also have a responsibility and the NTDA should have overall control of the management of, of the estates. To ensure proper drainage and mitigate flooding, NTDA embarked on the desilting of Victoria Arubieke Street, Remi Olowude, and Market Streets in Lekki Peninsula Scheme 1. It did the same on Oluwala Afolabi Street in Lekki Peninsula Scheme 2, Rafiu Babatunde Tinubu Street in Amu Wadofi Residential Scheme, and Road 3 in Abijo Residential Scheme. The flooding problem, let me tell you, cannot be wished away because it's a global problem. The seas are rising by 2 cm per annum. For this uh, fellowship site, a uh, flood was entering people's houses. Yes. And uh, still, it has not yet uh, been completely eradicated, but it has been greatly reduced. So, but we still call on the, uh, the NTDA and the Lagos State Government for the channelization and the clearing of the drainages to still be an ongoing effort. Because as far as human beings are concerned, still some miscreants will be dumping things here and there. Though we are trying to clear them with our police and our uh, sheriffs, but still it happens. So we need more, uh, more synergy in this aspect so that we can have more uh, clearer drains. NCDA is like the mother to all the Lagos State uh, uh, created estates. So uh, we relate to them like a child to a mother. They listen to our complaints and they assist in providing some of our needs in the estate. You could see we have um, various schemes developed across the states as that informs that the is, is as a, as a result of the outputs from the staff most of our schemes we have either just completed projects or ongoing there is no year we don't touch our schemes to do some infrastructures and all that and we also have a unit that is in charge of managing the estates such that it does not go into disarray or out of the original layout plan. So all these you can actually see when you visit our schemes. You will see the presence of NTD in all of our schemes. The quest of the NTDA to provide needed infrastructure and promote large-scale physical development in the state's various schemes will be impossible without the support of the administration of Governor Babajide Sawulu. The cost of materials is so high today. The time that the schemes was conceived, designed, and even starting the implementing, the cost of executing or implementing one kilometer of road cannot be compared to this particular time. And the allotis is not ready to pay more on the capital development levies. And that is the reason why in some of these schemes, the role that we are expected to do is not being done. When you have an administration or a leader that understands, you know, what is going on and the signs of the times, you are very understanding. You know that they need this thing. We are people who go out, investigate, bring up reports with pictures, you know, and then request assistance. So, Mr. Governor, you know, is very supportive of our programs and is the reason why we are, we are making the progresses that we're making and we are able to achieve what we're achieving. I wouldn't know the performance metrics or the measurement metrics the government has mapped out for itself. But I can speak of at least two impacts that those rules have done to our estates. Number one, uh, before we had 16 untired roads 
The immediate impact of the NTDA constructing those four roads in 2020 was that it gingered the residents because those roads became very beautiful and residents of other streets are like, ah, <laughs> how can that one be like this? So all those on tar roads, they were, they were gingered as at today. All our roads, 24 roads, are now tarred. Number two, another immediate impact, apart from the quality of life of residents uh, improving, another impact is that the value of our property in this estate has soared. If I want good things, I should be also be able to pay for it. So I, I, I think uh, the, the partnership we are talking about uh, uh, with government should not also end in uh, also providing housing. I think the partnership can also go further to say, look, infrastructure, uh, the residents probably like we told the, uh, some rules. So, we can also say, okay, government, the resident of this estate, because we are going to give you everything you need, uh, water, road, uh, security, light, and so on, uh, you have to be pay, paying certain amount every month. And probably that could be factored in as a kind of maintenance or uh, utility. So it may not be paid up front, but it could be uh, spread over uh, a certain number of years, and uh, you, you will see that uh, people uh, may will be willing to partner with government. Thank you very much. Now, just... The authority has been guided by the first pillar of the theme's development agenda, which is making Lagos a 21st century economy in delivering standard infrastructure that not only provide comfort and convenience for allottees of the schemes, but which also fast-track large-scale development of the state.